welcome to Eyes to Heaven. I'm Jen, and today I'm here to talk to you about the next sign that God wants me to lift up, which is Lepus, the hare, the bunny, the rabbit. Um, and this constellation is located underneath Orion. Where is it? I already turned to it, and I was like, no, that's not the one. Here it is. <laughs> okay. So here's Orion. He's fighting... Y'all don't pay attention to my fingers. I've been working in the dirt. Uh, there's there's Lepus, so the, the hair, right? And he's near Columba. He's near Sirius, right? Okay, so this is not the only place that um, the hair is visible. I don't have it in my book here, but I don't know if you uh, remember me mentioning when we looked at Centaurus... Um, Centaurus has the wolf. Let me find that one. Okay, he has the wolf right here, which is lupus, right? In some depictions of Centaurus, there is a rabbit here as well, which would make sense because phonetically they are similar, lepus and lupus, right? Um, but also we talked about Corvus last week, remember? And uh, the hair is very close here. Okay, it's also, here's Hydra too. Hydra is the water snake, right? So this is where it hangs sometimes in pictures. And that is, um, that's an interesting dual picture. Um, or a, right, we have pictures of different animals in the sky. I mentioned this before, how there'd be like two really good pictures. Like we've got um, Taurus, uh, but we also have uh, Ursa Major, which is also cows, right? So there's a bull and the cow, right? There's a picture of two two animals. We got the two eagles too, right? Um, and so this picture, I've talked about this before a lot uh, in passing, and I look through my videos, and I don't, I didn't watch all my videos because I've been so busy, but um, I know that I've covered this in at least two other ones because it. It's a picture of the head of Iridanus, right? Because uh, Orion is standing on it. So there's the lake of fire head that he's stepping on, uh, right? But I've also mentioned it um, with just Orion uh, because he is sitting on it. And um, and I think I've also mentioned it being uh, around anytime I mention the moon, right? Because there are associations of Lepus and the rabbit with the moon. And so it was weird to me that I had to go back to this one. And I thought for sure I had already done it. Um, but I'm going to go back through and talk about it again. Because this is kind of like, it's representative of a certain type of person. Okay. And, you know, certainly lupus is in a way, right? I've talked about that. Um, but this is a type of person. <laughs> um, and even remember, so remember last week when I talked about the crow, uh, and how, you know, it was a really negative picture. Um, there are positive attributes, right? We have the crow um, giving information to Elijah, right? The raven, right? They're, they're mentioned as the same thing throughout all different mythologies. So it was the crow, the raven, right? Was giving uh, Elijah probably information as well as maybe feeding him, right? Um, so this idea of gaining information is positive, feeding and eating that God did. Uh, he gave Elijah food, but there's also like all these negative connotations. Like we have the idea of baldness here. Um, well, the hair, right? The rabbit hair, this idea of hairiness and strength, right? is here in the hair, but it's also very negative, right? We have this idea of Esau that I talked about last week. And so this is a picture of that, but the roots here are very negative. Um, I think I will say that uh, the there is a picture of positive a positive picture here, and I'll I'll just go ahead and say that real quick because it's pretty small in the context of what I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention it a lot. So the positive pictures of the hare or the rabbit um, are like purity um, and you know even virginity, which is interesting because right above. Uh, Hydra and all that is Virgo the Virgin. So it's like a straight line. So this idea of virginity could be here as well. Um, but 
what we're going to talk about today is all of the negative stuff, <laughs> basically. So, um, the roots in lepus, or the roots in lepus are like faintness and weariness, okay? This is the first one. And so, we've got this idea of like running a race, uh, right? Because um, we also have the roots of slack, uh, hollow, relax, or loosen. So, what comes to mind when we think of that? We think of the tortoise and the hare, right? The hare was really fast and he got cocky and he was like, oh, well, I'm going to take a nap and I could still win. So he slacked, he relaxed, and then he uh, lost to the tortoise, right? And so this idea of weariness and running a race is here. And so obviously the idea of um, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint, right? Um, so this, that verse is directly here, but this idea of mounting up with wings as eagles is also interesting because Corvus and Lepus kind of overlap, all right? And so Corvus is a bird, um, but they overlap. And there's also been like um, pictures, like ancient pictures on like coins and gems and stuff of an eagle eating a hare or an eagle eating a snake, which, I mean, Hydrus is right there too. So there, it's like interchangeable, which is interesting. Um, but also rabbits are depicted uh, on Greek and Roman tombs as eating f uh, figs. Remember last week we talked about Corvus um, who devoured figs. He's a picture of a devourer. Um, and I mentioned the verse with uh, God talking about how you know, the, your strongholds will be devoured like figs, right? And so this picture of the rabbit is a devourer. And if you've ever had a garden without a fence around it and lived in uh, North America, uh, especially Northern, uh, up here we've got a lot of hares. <laughs> well, not hares, but bunnies. And they get into your garden. They eat, eat your garden. Uh, one ate my Brussels sprouts one year, and I was very upset about that. <laughs> um, but so you've got this picture of devouring, right? And, but you've also got a picture of slacking, right? And stopping, leaving off, but also limpness and lameness because, um, bunnies, they don't, they don't just go like this unless they're going very, very, very fast. And not always there's like this ba-boom, 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 you know, they just hop along. And so they have this limp, Right. Um, and then you've got haziness and uncertainty and, but you've also got really, really negative things like humiliating and hazing, right? Um, and harassment, um, annoying and tormenting people, right? Um, and so the negativity just is so pervasive <laughs> in this constellation, especially when what God told me to speak about, um, uh, in this way. So I mentioned this before how like, um, different cultures see the, a bunny in the moon, they see a rabbit in the moon, um, instead of, you know, well, the man in the moon is the rabbit in the moon. So the man in the moon is likened to Cain, um, and a bundle of twigs, right? So this picture of specifically a man breaking Sabbath, which is interesting because I talk about Sabbath all the time, but there's a man, you know, this is a picture of a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath. And why would it be related to Cain? If Cain, Cain was a murderer, did he break Sabbath? Well, if you're breaking Sabbath, you are not participating in loving your neighbor because you're not setting a good example and you are more than likely forcing your neighbor to work. Lots of people. I went on Sunday to a store and, you know, lots of church people like to say, uh, well, Sunday is my Sabbath. Um, and the parking lot is just full of people that just got out of church. And I went to a restaurant and the restaurant is full of people that just got out of church and they're so mean to the wait staff. I witnessed that so mean and unnecessary, but, and they're making people work. It's just, they're harassing people. Um, they're making people work. And on this day that supposedly they're supposed to have a Sabbath, which is interesting <laughs> because there are poems about this as well, um, that are wrong on so many different levels, but there's this one poem, uh, where a fairy, um, 
you know, this is Celtic, obviously. A man doesn't regard the Sabbath and the fairy goes up to him and she's like, why aren't you resting? Why are you gathering sticks or why are you doing work on the Sabbath? And the guy is like, every day is my Sabbath. And so apparently the fairy stuck him in the in the moon um, because he was carrying uh, sticks on the Lord's Day, which is interesting because the other thing that people say um, is that um, every day, I rest every day, right? Um, so this picture specifically of not resting on Sabbath is the picture of his hair, uh, which goes in tandem with the beast, right? Because of the pictures in Sitaris, how there is also um, a rabbit that hangs on with the beast on Centaurus's spear. Um, so, you know, these, these animals look like they chew the cud. And if you look even in Leviticus, I think it is, uh, where the d dietary guidelines are, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> It says, you know, they chew the cud, but they don't split the hoof. Bunnies don't actually chew the cud. They just look like it. They just look like they do. Like, they're they're tricksters. They're fakers. What other fakers do we know of that are rabbits? Bugs Bunny, right? Um, we've got this picture, you know, tricks cereal. The tricksters. Um, and so this idea of churning or whatever is what... Um, East Asians picture a bunny uh, or a rabbit in, in the moon who is pounding moki, uh, which is like a gluttonous rice cake, right? Um, and it is, it is a picture of him making immortality, okay? Um, but we have this idea of swiftness with the rabbit, right? Um, and what's interesting about this is, you know, we have Easter coming up this weekend. So I didn't, you know, there's so many different ways that I didn't think this was going to be lepus <laughs> because I was like, surely, um, I've already done this and surely, um, you know, Easter's, excuse me, Easter is this weekend. My phone just went off and hopefully I don't have to, um, upload two of these because I hate doing that. I have hate having to upload two. But anyway, so Easter is this weekend, right? I was talking about Easter. And um, this idea of fertility uh, that is associated with rabbits uh, is associated with Easter, obviously, because you have the beginning of spring and then everything is going to bloom, right, and be fertile. And then we're going to get our harvest, right? And so there's this pagan idea, pagan uh, goddesses that are worshipped that have to do with uh, fertility, um, but what I was saying was, um, the hare, uh, despises the voice of the raven, okay? Um, which is interesting because the hare is also depicted, like I said, uh, near, near, uh, Corvus, right? And this picture of, uh, information and God's words and God feeding you, right, is despised by the hair. Um, and people say, you know, Lepus sets soon after the raven, so that might be why. Um, but I think that uh, the representation of who Lepus is and what Corvus can represent makes sense, right? And you got this idea of like mad, madness, mad as a March hare, Right, uh, that's a an English saying because the hares over there uh, lose their minds in March when it's like mating season because they like box each other, they like fight each other, right? Um, and so you've got this idea, this whole picture, right? Uh, this whole picture of the bunny is like an amoral figure, right? And, you know, people say, like, if you look at Aesop's, you look at, like, Peter Rabbit and stuff, it, they, like, dance on the line between right and wrong. And so this is such a picture of modern Christians, <laughs> right? Because, um, you know, you've got the beast over here and the beast system, but you've got who balances it out, right? you got a picture of modern-day Christians, and you've got this root of persecution. I've talked about this before that like mass 
Christianity, 99.9% .9 of Christians, y'all, um, they believe that they're persecuted, and but they are actually the persecutors, right? Because the, the people that are doing God's law, the people that are doing the Ten Commandments are the ones that are persecuted because the way is narrow, right? But it, And they can't see that, but they go through this whole, you know, we're being persecuted thing. Um, and it's just not, it's just not true. Um, there's billions of people in the world, at least a couple billion, I think, that are Christian. Might just be one billion, but still, that's a lot of people. Uh, so you can't, you can't say that, oh, well, we're the ones being persecuted because it's absolutely not true. Um, and so there's something else interesting that I've seen, um, when I was looking up lepus and I was looking up hairs in general to try to learn more. And that's that, um, in different cathedrals around Europe, uh, there is this like three bunny figure where their, their ears come together and they make like the Trinity symbol. And it is a picture of, um, furthering the cause of church right of of probably the b system right it's a picture of sorcery is what it is okay because you wouldn't nobody would really create that symbol uh without malicious intent okay that is absolute sorcery um i i mean go figure it's a graven image that i keep saying right wood wood grave engraven um but uh there's this this pervasiveness okay because this is a type of person like i said before this is a person that forsakes the sabbath this is mass christianity and there's so many of them they reproduce so quickly right um that whole thing where god uh jesus was speaking to the pharisees and he said you know you take acolytes and you make them twice the son of hell as you than you are uh, and that's true. It's like, it's just perpetuated. There's so many because these people are harassers. There's tormentors of, you know, God's people. That's what they do. And so like, um, and it's so interesting that the Sabbath is like the root of, you know, their wickedness. Um, and this is what the beast hangs on basically is the root of Sabbath. You know, I've got I've been talking to a lot of different people about, you know, maybe a handful of people, not a lot of different people, just many, many to me, <laughs> people about how, um, the problem, you know, the problem with scripture or the problem with what people don't understand, like people like to get in the gritty and they like to like worship scripture. Okay. That's the root of it. A lot of people worship scripture and you can't do that. What is the biggest problem, the biggest problem that God's people face? I mean, there's idolatry is an issue, but the biggest problem and why I make a video every week besides the fact that I was told, but the reason why God told me to do it is because people need to be resting on the Sabbath day. And that is what holds the B system up. Because if you can cut down uh, everyone not doing the Sabbath day, if you can take that away and get everybody resting on the Sabbath, the B system won't stand anymore. Okay. And it will be thrown. We can throw that as a sacrifice to burn up and be gone forever. Right. And we can get our virgin purity out, right. Uh, out of this, uh, this picture of a bunny of a rabbit, right. Uh, instead of, you know, this torment that we're going through. And, you know, I think people, a lot of people have it wrong. And, you know, um, you know, I've talked about fallibility in the Bible before about how, you know, the Bible is fallible and people like to get really upset about that. But the fact of the matter is that it doesn't matter that it's fallible. Um, it doesn't matter if you have if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and if God has a relationship with you, which if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, he pulls you under his wing and it's he's palpable, right? 
it doesn't matter. And so <laughs> it doesn't matter. But people worship scripture and uh, people just, you know, people approach it from the wrong perspective. They approach it from, well, I'm going to point here, here, and here to tell you how you're right or wrong. When in actuality, you're working with a fallible object. And so you can't, and even some of these people will accept that this is a fallible object, right? And so you can point here and you can say, oh, well, this, this, and this tells me I don't have to do anything, right? Like the, the, uh, the bunny here. I don't have to do the law. You can point to this, this, and this, uh, and it tells you to do 613 laws. Or you can realize that God is good, right? Uh, that the way is very narrow and that you have a small list that, you know, he did give you to do because he's your creator and he knows what's best for you, right? And so, you know, God gave me this, uh, this sign that I'm supposed to talk about. Uh, he gave me this and he said, you know, let this be a listen lesson to people that worship scripture, okay? Because... We can't, we can't keep fighting people about semantics and we can't keep fighting people about this verse says this and this verse says this. We have to tell people Sabbath, okay? Because if we can, if we can take the Sabbath off, uh, you know, the whole not doing Sabbath off of the table, that weight is going to flip into the into the altar into the fire okay that wolf is going to fall into the fire so our number one strategy our number one thing we need to be doing is we need to be telling people that they need to be resting on the sabbath that's it and sabbath is awesome and I know that people give you a lot of crap for resting on Sabbath, but Sabbath is the best day of the week, hands down. I look forward to it every single week. I get to take naps. It's awesome. I get to Bible study and look up all this stuff. I get to, um, I get to play my ukulele. I get to eat kosher charcuterie. Like I get to not have to do anything. I get to wander around in nature. It is the one day of the week that I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. It's awesome. And I wish more people saw it that way, you know, because it's not a burden. It's just that everybody else has been so iniquitous for so long that it's become the norm to be iniquitous. But if we can change that into being righteous and doing what we're supposed to be doing, then it will be the norm and things won't be as terrible as they are now. <laughs> you know, Sabbath has always been the thing that Israel just cannot keep since the very beginning. It has been the one thing that Israel has failed at keeping for so long. We've looked at, we've seen idolatry as well. You know, we've got Christmas and now Easter is coming up and all this garbage. But the biggest problem, the biggest issue is Sabbath. Because once you sit down and you rest on Sabbath and you start putting your mind and looking into things yourself instead of what your pastor tells you, you will quickly see that, oh yeah, it is all idolatry and I've been doing this for so long and it's terrible and I should stop and I should, now that I'm doing Sabbath, I should do God's feast instead. Um, but you know, so that's, that's my message. Um, hopefully I can put these two videos together and not have to do two, but I will if I have to. Um, so I will see you again with another Sabbath video. And I'll see you next week with another one of these. And I hope you have a good one. Thanks for watching.